Today, we're talking about seven different automations every single business owner should be implementing into their business today, or you should be selling to business owners for them to implement into their business today. Let's get into it. We're gonna be using make.com for this. If you guys are unfamiliar with make.com, I do have a crash course on my YouTube channel. You can learn every single thing you need to know about make.com for free in a matter of a couple videos. The first workflow that I wanna talk about is intelligent document processing because this is so freaking cool and this is going to save you so much time. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into this. Essentially, let's take a contract like this. Imagine you, you have these contracts that you're dealing with in your business and you need to pull out information like, for example, the line items. And you have to add them into things like either your QuickBooks for accounting or you need to add them into you know um, Google Sheets, right? Like the line items here. Now, conventionally speaking, you'd have to do this by hand. And let's be honest, that freaking sucks. And I would hate doing that. And I'm sure you probably hate doing that as well. And so with a workflow like like this, we can automate that whole process. So let's talk about this for a second. There's a lot of different ways that we can start this workflow. In this scenario, we're just starting it when somebody um, drops a file into Google Drive. So we have this folder here. Let's say somebody throws a PDF document into this folder, okay? As soon as it lands in this folder, this particular workflow is going to be started. It's going to take that PDF document, turn it into text, and then it's going to use AI to pull out whatever information it is that you wanna pull out. In this instance, it's those line items. It's gonna go through those line items one by one and add them into the Google Sheet just like this, right? So we have nine different line items here and with it varying prices and all of that kind of stuff. If we go back to the agreement, we can also see here that there's nine line items from DJ service deposit all the way down to videography parking deposit. Now I mentioned before there's multiple different triggers for this. So of course it could be when somebody drops a file into your Google Drive. It could also be when somebody literally sends you a PDF in your Gmail account, right? So in Gmail, you might get a receipt like this and you automatically want to start this workflow. Or maybe it starts when somebody pays and signs an agreement in your CRM. That could be Salesforce, go high level or whatever, right? There's a lot of different starting points. Also, if somebody pays and signs through PandaDoc, which is a document platform, right? And we could do whatever we want with that information. We can add that information into QuickBooks for automated bookkeeping purposes. We could add that into Google Sheets like we just talked about, or we can add it into the other 1,000 applications that make.com provides us with. Wow, that is such a freaking time saver. If you use PDF documents, this is going to be super game changing for you. The next thing that I wanna talk about is lifecycle automation. So what is that? Let's take an average business, for example. Somebody will come to your particular website, they'll fill out a quote form on your site, and they'll become what I like to define as a new lead. And the first thing to do with a new lead is to get them on a sales call, because that's probably, if you're offering services, how you sell clients. And not everyone closes on the first call, so you have to schedule follow-up appointments and then send a contract and maybe they'll pay. And so all of this can be automated using lifecycle automation. So let's take a look at this practically speaking. Jenica, this client came in and immediately within like 10 seconds, we send her a text message being like, hey, let's jump on a call. We'd love to talk about how we can help. And we also send an email as well. And this call happens within 10 seconds. The cool thing is, is not only are all of these pieces of communication being automated, but we're also automating things like sending off a proposal to her right away that's customized to her. You can see her name up here in the top right corner. And so take a look at this. We're sending off a proposal because we're a wedding company. We're sending off our pricing. We're sending off what makes us different, right? Also a video of us and our team and our full-time team and, you know, reviews and all that kind of stuff. So we're answering questions or we're giving answers before questions arise. After that particular sales call happened, which in this case was 34 minutes, you can see that we automatically send off a recap email being like, here's all the details that we just talked about. Gone are the days where you have to manually send off like a recap email and it takes you like 30 minutes or whatever. So all of these things, <laughs> they're just automated. We scheduled the follow-up appointments and we dripped out notifications confirming that call and so on and so forth leading up to the appointment. She ended up actually no showing this particular um, appointment, which was fine. And then we sent her down uh, a sequence where we tried to re-engage with her after no showing to get her to book another call. All of these things are automated. Either you're automating these, they're slipping through the cracks, or you're just not doing them, right? So obviously this is a great way to increase the amount of 
money you make and the time you save. This brought me for like this, this was just game changing for me and, and my business. And it brought me from like probably 16 hours down to 30 minutes. Obviously it's in part the automation and in part hiring a ton of people on my team. But yeah, this is, this is game changing for me. And so the next thing that I want to talk about here is contracts. Now I have people reaching out all the time, asking me to build a system like this. And so Let's talk about this. This system automatically creates contracts and invoices. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So this is, by the way, probably pretty boring. Like nobody likes dealing with contracts or invoices. And that's why, especially you probably want to automate them, right? So <laughs> like something like this, there's dozens and dozens of variables coming in here. All of this is automated. This would probably take me 30 minutes, but instead it's just done in one click of a button. And um, it also saves our team just tons of time every single day. So practically speaking, what it happens is we have a sales call form where we're on a sales call. Hey, Jenica, it's nice to chat with you, blah, blah, blah. Here's the prices that we have. And then what we do is we come down here and click submit. And when this sales call is done, we, cl we collect all the information we need. Then we just click submit and this agreement is automatically sent off to her in a matter of seconds. The next thing here is a AI agent. This um, I have clients or people reaching out to me all the time asking for AI agents. This is probably pretty much every single day at this point in time. And so let me explain how a system like this works. So practically speaking, we're, we have an SMS chatbot. So I just literally pick up my phone and I'm texting with it. And keep in mind, you can be texting with it, your employees could be texting with it, your clients could be texting with it, doing whatever tasks you need that chatbot to do. And so what happens is the message comes through and then we have an AI manager. Okay, and this is an AI agent. And essentially this manager will delegate tasks to AI employees or AI other AI agents. So maybe it comes through and it's like, hey, I need to understand, are we looking to send this to the billing department? Are we looking to send this to the recruitment department or what, right? And up here could be like billing, down here could be recruitment, and then we get something coming through for billing. And then it's like, okay, let's send it to the billing agent. And then this AI agent or AI employee will get that request and then I'll have to decipher from billing what task actually needs to be done and it will have a list of tools right tool one tool two to get the job done and once that job is done it will send off and a message to you just letting you know that the task has been completed this is just two tasks here but it could be ten thousand tasks okay that might be <laughs> that's a bit insane but, but but you know it can be more than two tasks and just like one of these examples here what's going on is we're looking for emails and we're going to take out receipts from those emails. And very similar to, similarly to before, we're gonna take out the line items and we're gonna enter that into a Google Sheet just like this, and that is going to save us a lot of time. So that's just one example of one particular task that you can get an AI agent to do for you. And um, the next workflow that we have here is a RAG system, retrieval augmented generation. And so what this does is you can think of it like a database. And this database is trained on the history of your company. Every text message, every email, every contract, every invoice, every single website page that you've ever created, you're going to save it into your own custom database. And we're using Pinecone as that database. And practically speaking, what happens is anytime a customer sends a text message, it will search that database trained on the history of your company and then it'll provide an answer based on the exact information you feed into it. And so for this example, I have a text message going through or a conversation going through where a client messages, hey, and, or I, I just started by saying, hey, just as this example, client comes through and says, hey, what company is this? And it's trained based on your information. This is DJing.ca, your go-to DJ service. How can we help you today? And then, you know, client asks again, what is your ballpark range? And it says, our DJ prices vary by event type. For weddings, we're typically between 150 to 500 an hour for corporate events or this and for private parties or that um, you know want to chat more and I could send another text message being like uh, can you tell me the best month of the year to plan my wedding and it's going to give me an answer based on the text message that comes in here, right? And obviously this is going to be subject to where you are in the world, right? But let's take a look at this particular answer that comes through from the AI system on the back end that just received that message. 
So in a matter of seconds here, we will receive this. I'm trying to make it as suspenseful as possible <laughs> while I'm slowly killing time here, waiting for this message to come through. Okay, there we go. Okay, I was worried there for a second. The best months for a wedding often depend on your preferences, but many couples opt for late spring, May to June, and early fall, September to October for pleasant weather and beautiful scenery. Interest in discussing your wedding plans? And so this is perfect for Canada, right? Because in Canada, where we service clients, these are the best months. And so that's obviously really, really cool. Now, the next thing that I think every single business owner should be implementing into their business, or at least trying out, is web scraping. So take this example. Let's say that you are looking for leads and specifically you're looking for landscaping companies and you're looking for people that don't currently have a website so that you can sell website design services. So in the good old days, you'd log into Google Maps and you'd painstakingly go through every single listing here and write it down in a Google Sheet and every listing you go through, your soul slowly gets crushed more and more inside until you either become numb to the pain or you hate yourself because of it. And let's be honest, <laughs> nobody wants that. But with web scraping, you don't have to do any of that kind of stuff anymore because it's gonna be automated for you. So in this scenario, what's happening is we're web scraping a listing like this on Google Maps. It's pulling out all of these businesses. We can then send that data into our CRM. And I just chose Go High Level because that's the CRM I've been using for five or six years at this point in time. And then with uh, with Go High Level, what we can do is we can send off a text message or whatever with uh, a customized website. And when I say customized, I use that term loosely because um, technically it is customized, but it's also 100% automated. So on the background with um, Go High Level, you can have like custom variables on a website like name here. And when you reload the page, it will pull in custom variables from the URL parameters. So I have name here, which would populate that name field as the name of the business, which is Metropolitan Garden Design, which I pulled in from right here on the first listing. So you could customize this website with this company's name or address or phone number or whatever the information is that you can find on their particular Google My Business listing. So obviously that's really, really, Cool, right? But it doesn't just have to be website design. You could offer SEO services or whatever, or just get a general list of, of businesses to call, right? The options are endless. But when you're using web scraping, you don't just have to uh, web scrape for new leads. You can do data enrichment. So let me explain. Somebody comes to your website like this. They're like, this sounds great. I'm going to fill out a quote form and inquire with this particular business. They give you their first name, last name, email, and phone number. And as soon as, okay, somebody inquires, what you can do is you can essentially take that person's information and run them through Apollo and see, do they exist in Apollo, which is like a, it's like a database, a lead database that you can enrich data on somebody. So maybe you give Apollo the email of the person and it gives you back their job title, their company that they work at, the LinkedIn profile, what they do at that company. And then maybe you take that LinkedIn uh, profile URL and then you use web scraping to data enrich more information like their past job history and their tagline and their bio and all that kind of stuff on LinkedIn. And so by the time you're done with this data enrichment process, you can have tons of data to create custom sales scripts, to create custom outreach campaigns, to do whatever it is you want with. Even just build talking points and, and, and build rapport with people so that you can better sell them, right? And so that in a nutshell is seven different ways or seven different automations that I think every single business owner would greatly benefit by implementing today. And also you can sell these to business owners as well. Now, once again, guys, if you're interested in any of these blueprints, they're all gonna be free uh, for you to download and you can find it in the description of this video. All you have to do is go to those links, download the blueprints, and then you can come into make.com, hit these three dots, import the blueprint in, and then it is going to be in your account for free in a matter of only a few minutes. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you found value in this video, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye.